This discussion of piping basics, common to many types of industrial utility systems, includes specifications regarding piping thickness and lengths, as well as pipe mill operations. Most gas piping systems are constructed with steel pipe, although copper is also an acceptable material in certain applications. If copper is used, the joints must be brazed with materials that have a melting point of over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Most commonly used brazes, but not solders, meet this requirement. This is different from the typical lead-based solder used for water pipes, which has a melting point below 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's start with how steel pipe is made. There are three primary manufacturing methods the electric resistance welding process, the continuous welding process, and the seamless process. The electric resistance welding, ERW process, and the continuous welding, CW process, both start with steel in a precision strip form. In the ERW process, the strip is fed cold, unheated, toward rolls that slowly form the pipe into an oval and then a precision cylinder. A continuous electric resistance weld is applied at the joint that is formed. Excess metal flash that evolves from the welding process and the pressure of the two pieces being pushed together is removed with a special cutter. In the continuous welding CW process, the strip is first heated in furnaces and then to form the pipe is shaped into an oval and precision tube, just as in the ERW process. The difference is that the temperature and pressure make a forged weld. To put it in its simplest terms, seamless pipe is produced by piercing a solid billet of deoxidized and conditioned steel, which has been heated to a required temperature. It is then processed through a series of mills and rolls until it is finished to prescribed dimensions. Pipe mills usually provide pipe in 21-foot lengths, although specialty lengths of up to 40 feet can be obtained in some sizes. Pipe can be provided with plain ends, beveled ends, grooved ends, threaded ends, or threaded and coupled ends. Pipe is also available in a number of different surface finishes. If a threaded and coupled arrangement is purchased and the intended use is natural gas piping within the scope of NFPA 54, you must make sure that the threads are tapered threads, not straight threads. If straight thread couplings are used, they may be mixed with tapered thread fittings, which will undoubtedly leak over time. NFPA 54 requires that only tapered thread fittings be used on gas piping systems. Steel pipe can be purchased that conforms to many different specifications and metallurgical grades. NFPA 54 identifies pipe for gas lines up to a maximum allowable pressure rating of 125 PSIG. It states that ASTM2 A53A or A53B is suitable, along with ANSI B160 seamless pipe. ASTM A53B is stronger than ASTM A53A.3. The A and B designations denote the grade of the pipe. Seamless B160 is even stronger, but it usually costs much more than the others. ASTM A53A and A53B can be bought either longitudinally welded or seamless. After determining the designation, you would then specify a schedule or thickness of pipe, schedule 10, 40, 80, or other. The higher the schedule number, the thicker the pipe wall, and the smaller the inside diameter. For example, a 2-inch schedule 10 pipe has an approximate wall thickness of 0.109 inch. A 2-inch schedule 40 pipe, a wall thickness of 0.154 inch and a 2-inch Schedule 80 pipe, a wall thickness of 0.218 inch. Guidance on pipe thickness calculations and designations can be found in ASME B31.1 and B31.3 for natural gas applications and in ANSI specifications.
you may want to specify Schedule 80 for fuel gas piping systems that may be installed in areas where corrosion is possible, even though it was not needed from a pressure rating perspective to provide an additional element of safety. Adding material for corrosion considerations is a traditional practice in process plant design. Thank you.